guess what happened today? I don't know if you caught this in the news at all, but today, Thursday, a statue of the Reverend Billy Graham was unveiled in the U.S. Capitol. And there is no good reason that should be going up. So it's it, it's important to talk about why that's happening. Um, because this is, why are we putting up a preacher statue in the U.S. Capitol? The bottom line is every state is allowed to put up two statues in the Capitol's National Statuary Hall. Every state gets to choose two people that like best represents their state. And in 2018, North Carolina's governor, Roy Cooper, who's a Democrat, by the way, he said, we got to take down one of our two statues because the one of the statues in there was a former governor named Charles Acock, and he was an avowed white supremacist. Um, and Roy Cooper said, I don't like that this guy is representing our state. I know it makes a lot of people in our legislature and citizens uncomfortable. Why don't we remove that? That guy has uh, outlived his welcome, right? So they wanted to take it down to make room for a second statue. But they, and they actually did this in 2015. They said they're going to replace it with a statue of Billy Graham uh, because he's from North Carolina. But you can't actually make a formal request unless the dude is dead. And Billy Graham didn't die until 2018 at the age of 99. So after 2018, even though everyone in North Carolina seemed to be on board with this, in 2018, they began the process. And I'm going to show you, this is the actual uh, rule book for how to get a statue in the hall. And you don't have to read any of this except to see there are like many, look at the steps in the procedure here. There are many steps that you got to go through to get a statue approved uh, by the Capitol. So all of this has to happen. They started doing all this stuff in 2018. Um, they hired a sculptor to create a model of the statue. They had to get a congressional committee to approve it. Um, for what it's worth, you might be thinking, why is the state paying for a statue of an evangelical preacher? Well, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, his nonprofit group, they are covering the costs of it. It's about $650,000, all things told. They're putting up the money, so taxpayers are not paying for this. But what the statue is, it's a seven-foot-tall bronze statue of Graham gesturing toward an open Bible in his hand. He's standing on a pedestal engraved with John 3.16 and John 14.6, like two uh, very stereotypical Bible verses. Fine. Uh, because if there's one thing I know about the Bible, it's that God loves idols. So it's not so much a church-state separation issue. It's just, yeah, this is a guy who happens to represent North Carolina. He also happens to be a Christian. I don't love it. Um, he's not the only religious leader, though, who has a statue like uh, Utah. One of their statues is Brigham Young, the Mormon leader. Hawaii has a Catholic priest named Father Damien. So it's not the only one. But it, I don't know. if that's the best your state can do, it says a lot about how broken your state is. Right. But here's the reason Billy Graham is not a good choice. I know they want to honor him because he's this famous evangelist who is known for like spreading the gospel. And his children are like the Trump children. Like somehow they're even more embarrassing than the old guy. But let's talk about what Billy Graham actually stands for. Because uh, here's an example of a transcript of things he said with Richard Nixon, according to tapes that were released. Richard Nixon said, Newsweek is totally, it's, it's all run by Jews and dominated by them in their editorial pages. The New York Times, the Washington Post, totally Jewish too. What does Billy Graham say? This stranglehold has got to be broken or this country is going down the drain. And Nixon's like, the fuck? Do you believe that? Yes, sir, says Billy Graham about the Jews. Like, holy crap, this dude was anti-Semitic. And Billy Graham later apologized for that. But whatever, you said it. We have it on tape. OK, he also said to Richard Nixon that if he were reelected, we might be able to do something about this problem, by which he meant the Jews. OK, so that's Billy Graham for you. He obviously also thought everyone who disagreed with his theology was going to burn in hell for eternity. And I don't know why we're celebrating that. Um, he also 
believed that, uh, where did he say this? He said AIDS was God's punishment for homosexuality. And then later he apologized for that one too, but he did say it. Uh, he also urged people, this is a headline from uh, 2012. Billy Graham backs North Carolina anti-gay marriage amendment. I think this was a full page ad in a bunch of newspapers saying, you guys don't let same sex couples get married. It's up for a vote right now. This is before the Supreme Court legalized it. Um, so he's he was anti-gay near the end of his life. And I think the best example of how horrible he is uh, is right here. He knew Martin Luther King Jr. Graham was among the many of King's friends and foes. He was a foe to comment on the Birmingham marches and the civil rights leaders imprisonment. Like Martin Luther King was jailed. He wrote letters. Uh, what did he write? Letters, letter from a Birmingham city jail. Um, what did Billy Graham say about all that? Speaking to the New York Times, Billy Graham urged his good personal friend, MLK, to put the brakes on a little bit. Graham expressed serious doubt that the Negro community there supports it. Like, imagine telling Martin Luther King Jr., slow down with your civil rights push. You're moving too fast. Stay in your lane. Like, that's what Billy Graham represents. Everything that is wrong. <laughs> like his, and even if you look away from all that horrible stuff he said, his claim to fame is perpetuating mythology, which if he inspired the modern religious right, he has helped steer our country further into a ditch. And even if in his final decade, he regretted some of his earlier statements, the things he proudly stood for are not worth defending either. Like, it's one thing for Christians to say they admire Billy Graham because for years he was considered like one of the most admired men in America because there were only like three men on TV or something. But if you look at his full resume, including his blemishes and his god-awful children like Franklin Graham, people should be embarrassed by what Billy Graham has come to represent. But that is the statue that was unveiled in Statuary Hall today in the halls of Congress. Um, and the funny thing is, you know who the other North Carolina statue now is? Because they took down the white supremacist governor. Um, the other statue that North Carolina has is another former governor named Zebulon Baird Vance, who was a slave owner who served in the Confederate Army. Oh, and he also promoted white supremacy. Which means a man who stood for bigotry and oppression uh, now has his statue next to a former governor who is a literal slave owner.